So, so uh, I'm the vice president of support here at uh, Nimble. Been here for a while since since literally the beginning, and and worked on a lot of the support infrastructure uh, that's built into the product. And I'll kind of go through that and sort of some of the philosophy behind support, and then introduce InfoSight, and then I'll hand it over to our chief data scientist Larry, who works for me, and uh, he'll give you a little bit more insights on how we do some of the data science and a demo of, of InfoSight itself as well and portions of it. All right, so from, you know, if, you, if you take a look at any big company like an eBay or a Cisco or anything like that, those guys are managing huge amounts of infrastructure. So lots of remote devices, uh, desktops, file storage devices, so on and so forth. And they tend to do that with relatively few people nowadays. And they do it because they're all connected. I mean, these, all these systems are connected to one another or in their corporate infrastructure, even the remote devices and so on. So they can keep an eye on it. And it's a space with pretty mature tools and solutions around that for monitoring, uh, applying remote uh, virus updates, and so on and so forth. So the idea here is that if they can do that for their infrastructure, we should be able to essentially do the same for the infrastructure that we sell to our customers. And so right from the beginning, we've had the philosophy built around this where we've built in that connectivity back to Nimble Storage at the, the support center here. And then, of course, developing a set of tools to be able to do that monitoring and even remote repair of the, of the devices. So if you take a look kind of at sort of the existing approach when it comes to how uh, typical support organizations might handle a, a customer situation, typically what happens is the customer would call in, there's a bunch of question <coughs> and answers back and forth, data gathering. Uh, that might take a day or a few hours or a day, and it may not be all the right data. It goes back and forth again. So there's all this back and forth of collecting logs and diagnostic information and everything uh, with the customer. Oops, sorry. And in addition to that, there's, you know, you, when you start multiplying that by thousands of customers, it just becomes quite unruly for the support organization. And you have, you know, you need those armies of people all of a sudden to be able to support such a thing. So the, we asked the question, you know, right at the beginning again, why can't vendors proactively monitor these customer deployed systems? and really be connected to them and collect the data automatically and really do analytics on that proactively and, and when you need it in real time. So that really is the philosophy about what we're doing here. So all of these devices that we sell, all the nimble storage arrays, we collect data in various methods here. So we have, if you take a look at the frequent data collection, we get um, heartbeats sent back to us uh, every five minutes or so from all of the arrays. And in that is a, a data set that contains basic health of all of the software running on there, all the different processes, all of the hardware health, temperature sensor uh, readings, all of this kind of stuff, uh, all of the high availability statistics and stats on that, uh, what state it's in, uh, replication information and throughput on replication, any errors that we're seeing on replication, even things like whether their email alerts are working or not. So the heartbeat itself can actually tell us a lot about the other kind of remote access or remote capabilities or monitoring capabilities that we have to make sure those are working as well. So we get those every five minutes or so. Uh, we actually also can collect um, a set of uh, comprehensive telemetry on the system that comes back to us each day. That's full configuration. So every single thing on that array um, uh, comes back as its set of configuration information, uh, statistics, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, uh, log events, and state information. So down here in the corner, we're talking about 30 million sensors per array per day. So the, there's about 20,000 different sensors that are built into the system that record at a per second interval on the array. We bring home the per minute roll up of that each day. So in any given day on a, uh, on a sort of minimally configured array, if you will, we'll get about 30 million data points back from that array. On an array with a lot of volumes and a lot of snapshots, there's all sorts of statistics about each of those. Uh, that, that number might be up in the, into the hundreds of million or 100 million uh, sensors per day that come back. All of that gets back into the InfoSight engine for analysis. Um, in addition to that, we put all of that smart, and this is what uh, Larry will tell you more about, but a lot of that analytics and proactive wellness and so on that we do all goes into the InfoSight portal that customers have access to. So they can log into a cloud managed uh, service where they can see all of this information in that uh, InfoSight portal. 
And we do a whole bunch of analysis and automation. So I'll, I'll get into a little bit more uh, examples here. But you can imagine, once we have all of that data around all of our systems, it's very easy for us to do uh, queries across the install base. We, if, if, for example, one customer has a problem where, for example, if you're configured this way and you're doing this kind of I.O. or whatever that criteria is, we can see and find easily all of the customers that are susceptible to that same issue. <coughs> so it's an SQL de type yep. database or something like that? Customers can query it uh, through SQL or? Uh, customers don't have direct, direct access to Not even querying the SQL database. Say again? Not even their own data. They can't, they can't look Not through it. SQL. They can do, view it all through the InfoSight portal. And so what we're trying to do here is not, not expose raw data, but rather expose um, uh, an analysis that we've done with, with real meaningful actions that they can go perform. Or, and that, and you'll see in, in some of the stuff, that would include even things like telling them how they're doing from a cache uh, utilization perspective so that they know that they need to go do a cache upgrade as an example. Um, the, the information in the raw data to try and discern that is very complex. I mean, that's what the data scientist guys figure out and through system modeling of our cache to be able to know when you need a cache upgrade. For them to look at the raw data and figure that out, it, it would be impossible to do things like that. All right, so proactive wellness. What we're talking about here essentially is a lot of automated case creation. Uh, based on rules and that we've either predefined or thought about in the, uh, prior to the product being shipped or you know, through some normal course of action. Or as we have escalations sorry, or new learnings from a case, uh, you know, a bad situation, we can again figure out what's the right query against the database, what's the right answer to that problem. It might be a, you know, through a KB article, through some configuration change the customer needs to make. So we do automated case creation and get that answer back to the customer. We do think, you know, some samples here about what we do. So we can do things, for example, like MPIO misconfigurations. So if customers have enabled, uh, for example, multi-initiator access on a volume which we know is not running, or likely running a, uh, a file system that can handle that, so a, a normal Windows volume that's, that's not in a cluster, you really don't want multi-initiator access to that. And so we check, a, things like that, and we tell them. And we create cases optionally for things like that, or they can view it on the, uh, the uh, InfoSight portal. Mm. There's a whole bunch of checks like that that we do in the proactive wellness part. And then the InfoSight portal is this cloud-based management system that allows them to view all of this information. They can manage their support cases there. They can search KB articles there. They can see projections on capacity trending and when they're going to run out of storage, when they need to do uh, CPU and cache upgrades and so on and so forth. They can even, there's even a tool in there that uh, allows them to plan their replication uh, bandwidth requirements. So they can have a set of arrays that uh, uh, are within InfoSight and they might say that, well, this array is replicating to this other array and I want uh, five minute uh, uh, RPOs for that data. It will tell them what kind of bandwidth they need on the, on the WAN link in order to achieve, to achieve that and keep the data on the downstream DR array um, up to date in order to meet that RPO. So there's, uh, there's planning tools available as well in there for them. And then this uh, proactive issue resolution. So this is uh, uh, where I talked about when we have some learning that we want to understand whether or how much of the install base may be affected by it. So this is the sort of thing that we work with engineering uh, to understand what the issue might be and what we need to go query on the database to, to take action and understand who's impacted and what the right, uh, right steps would be uh, to, to remedy that situation. So what one example we had, it talks here, a little picture about these buffers and memory consumption. So we had this issue where a customer uh, array had experienced an issue where it failed over to the other side um, because of a controller restart on the active controller and it failed over and so now we're digging in to find out what had happened there. And it was fairly mysterious. We actually found that there was a kernel uh, message that got reported where there was an uh, out of memory error. So we're assuming that maybe there's a memory leak but it, probably you guys know that that's kind of a needle in a haystack kind of problem. There's all sorts of processes mm -hmm. running on the system, all sorts of things that can do memory allocations and so on within a complex system like this. So the question is how do you find the root cause of that? 
So with all of the statistics that we get back from the array on, at these per minute sensors, uh, these include things like memory allocations and buffer utilizations of all sorts of buffers throughout the system and what, what the usage of that buffer is coming and going and so on and when, it's, when memory's allocated and freed and so on. So we actually took a look at all of the stats that had something to do with things that sounded like allocating memory and we just looked at all of those uh, within the, with, you know, by doing a SQL query and graphing that in our visualization tools. And we, could, we actually found one where we could see this sort of exponential rise in uh, memory utilization. And so we could tell what buffer that was. We looked in the code to, to find out uh, where that buffer is being used and allocated. And literally engineering found the software bug with, within about five lines of, of where we had correlated log events happening um, at the same frequency as we saw that memory uh, utilization rising. So there was a, a benign info level message being take, or being output to a log file about snapshots being taken. And it correlated exactly with the frequency of that uh, rise in memory utilization. We looked at where that snapshot uh, was being taken in the code and we actually found the bug right there, that memory leak. We then predicted across the install base who was gonna hit this next. <laughs> So if you're taking snapshots of this, you know, sort of magnitude and frequency and blah, 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 you know, what are the systems out there in the world that are susceptible? And we actually predicted through work that Larry did what day of the week with, over the course of about a two-week period when they would hit that, that issue. And we started getting a hold of those customers to upgrade to a patch that we had built that night. There was a few that we couldn't reach in time and we knew was going to happen. The, the, the effect of what they were going to see was pretty benign. I mean, it was a storage or a controller failover, which is still non-disruptive. Um, so for the ones that we didn't catch in time, they failed on the exact day in order that we predicted based on this. So that's the value of having all of that data and people like Larry and the data science team to, to work on this stuff with us. I know it's just analytics, but have you had any customers that have trouble with you guys getting all this information back? Yeah, it's actually kind of interesting. So. So we know that problem. I mean, we, we're, we're expecting that. We actually have a, a sort of an auto or a uh, InfoSight data set enablement um, rate of about 92% out on the install base. It's at about 82% within 60 days after shipment. So most people just turn it on right away. And so we, we, we expect to have that. There are a couple of sites that have told us they don't want to enable it because of secure reasons. Uh, right now, we're, we, we haven't had a big drop in penetration because of that. We know we we will at some point potentially. There's other things we're doing to, to, uh, to, to address that. So we are looking at doing a, uh, an instance of InfoSight that is deployable to a secure site. Okay, so that, that will be something that's on the roadmap. Um, the other so not a lot of nimble customers at Fort George Mead? Say again? Not a lot of nimble customers at Fort George Mead? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so the, the other... The other um, uh, <laughs> it's called Prism. <laughs> Yeah, the other, the other thing we're finding in, in, uh, in Japan right now, customers are, are a little bit reticent to turn it on and send data. Um, you know, they're, they're just very you know, secure in that sense, I guess, too. It, it turns out that we're finding, though, that when our resellers go in there and talk to, to the, the pr prospects and they show them InfoSight, they absolutely have no qualms turning it on. So the, the trick there is just showing value. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that through a, through a uh, demo of InfoSight, I mean, it just sells them. I mean, and we actually track a lot of um, wind notes and things like this, and, and we often see that, that InfoSight has been the thing that has closed a lot of deals when, when customers see it. it. It's pretty remarkable. So you're getting 30 million sensors a day from each array? 30 million data points across and those how sensors. How many arrays are, are you tracking at the moment? Yeah, uh, close to 4,000. Where do you store all I mean, that? Good thing they're a storage business. <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking around the room, can I mention the number? As, as uh, Larry will point out, Nimble is very good at big data. And you'll see why. <laughs> yeah, so all, and Larry will get into it. Yeah, all this goes into a, mm -hmm. uh, actually a Vertica database. And, and just big data in general we're great at, and, and especially with Vertica, we, we blow the lid off their uh, performance benchmarks. Hmm. It's remarkable. So it is on your array. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Everything on Nimble is on It's Nimble. an Amazon, you know, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 it's all on HDFS on FIO cards. 